Thanks to all the previous presenters. It's really an honor to be here today. Um, I'm Abby Beckel, and I'm the co-founder and publisher of Rose Metal Press, a nonprofit publishing company dedicated to bringing more attention to hybrid genres. Rose Metal Press was founded in 2006, and we publish three books a year. My connection to Sandy Spring is through my father-in-law, Phil Schwarz, who's a member of the very first Sandy Springs graduating class in 1963, and who now serves on the board. Um, I'm going to talk today about what hybrid genres are and why literary innovation is important. So first I want to break down what the term hybrid genre means. Genre can mean a lot of things. It's essentially a group within a group. Uh, there's genres of music and art, writing of course, and um, sometimes people use like to talk about mystery and romance, they use the term genre fiction. But for our purposes in Rose Metal Presses, we use the word to mean form. So story, short story, novel, poem, and those forms are, have parameters like word counts or line breaks. Um, they have a structure. And so then what is hybrid? It's not just all those Priuses in the parking lot. It's also, um, or it is sort of the same concept. We, it's partly one thing and partly another two forms to create something new. These are just examples of possible genre combinations. An essay and a poem combination could create a lyric essay, or it could create a prose poem, or something else altogether. The intersection of two forms is what's interesting and forms new forms of expression. These are some names that people give to hybrid genres. The names often tell you the two genres that have been combined together, kind of like a hyphenation of a last name when, during a marriage. We see also a lot of authors combining more than two genres. Um, the book that's coming up, that I take back, The Sponge Cake, is an image and poetry collaboration where there's a piece of art and a poem on each page, and they took it one step further by making it also a choose-your-own-adventure. So it's really an exciting non-linear read for the audience. So why innovate? Well, humans have been innovating since the beginning of time, and literature is no exception. We've always been storytellers, but the form through which that we've told our stories has evolved over time. The chart that's coming up is an oversimplification, but it gives you an idea of how verbal storytelling became epic poems, and that form evolved over many centuries to become the modern novel. Literature, like language, is constantly evolving, and we are always looking for new ways to express ourselves. So what will the next genres be? I have no idea, and that's exciting. Every, writers everywhere are pushing the boundaries of traditional genres, but unlike in the technology field, the literary field doesn't always reward innovation. It loves its classics. I love the classics too, but remember, most of the classics were revolutionary in their time. That's why we still admire them. It's crucial that we cultivate space as readers and publishers for the innovative writing of today. And now I'm going to talk briefly about two particular hybrid genres. Flash fiction are short stories under a thousand words. They are a hybrid of poetry and short stories, using the narrative tools of short story and the conciseness of poetry. These ignite talks are kind of like a flash fiction version of public speaking. Um, flash fiction writers love word counts. So they love, this is like concise, quick, it's fun, powerful. They have six word stories. They have nanofiction, dribbles, drabbles, droobles, microfiction, which is under 400 words. And all of those are under the umbrella of flash fiction, which is under 1,000 words. There's sudden fiction under 1,500 words. People have called them all sorts of things, short shorts, quick fiction, fast fiction. To give you an idea, regular short stories, traditional ones, are between 2,000 and 7,500 words. These are two flash fictions on the page, so you can see how short they can really be. Um, there's no excess in flash. Every word matters. And one of the really cool things about flash fiction is that even though it's short and you can read it quickly, a good flash piece is so compressed and so full of energy that you think about it long after you finish reading the piece, like a flash from a camera that sticks to your retina all day, but in a good way. Um, lately, we have been reading many manuscripts in a newer 
hybrid genre called novellas or novels in flash. These are essentially book-length narratives made up of a series of standalone flash fiction pieces. This book, Lillian's Balcony, has six speakers who recur throughout the book, and each time they do, they have these small flash fiction stories, and then they all come together to form the plot of a novel. So they keep recurring with these little short standalone pieces, and then it builds into a novel. This book is also um, a novella in flash, and it is all standalone stories, and then they build and layer about a boy, his family, and a tornado. It's a really cool form that a lot of people are using. It's a little bit deeper than using chapters um, to have individual stories. So our experience of the world is different than the generations before us. We are always searching for new forms that better fit the hybrid nature of our experience and our world. What did our English teachers always tell us? Form mirrors content. Hybrid genres are the mirror for the content that is our modern reality, a means of expressing our age-old human emotions in new and innovative ways. Plus, they're super fun to read, and I hope you will. Thanks a lot.